Everybody, welcome Jeff. He's going to talk about securely extend Kubernetes networking to include virtual machines. So everybody give him a warm welcome. Hello, everybody. Is the mic working? Are we good with the mic? Great. So, yep, I'm Jeff. Uh, I'm actually a community advocate at Isovalent, and I'm going to be talking specifically about uh, Cilium external workloads using WireGuard encryption to basically extend Kubernetes uh, to things outside or send the Kubernetes network outside of, of the cluster itself. So, what's in this talk? I'm going to give you a slight motivation why I'm excited and why you should be excited about this. I'm going to give some background about uh, the technologies involved, Cilium and WireGuard. I'm going to do a not quite live demo of six steps of how to get this all set up. And then um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what these external workload concepts in Cilium are in detail. Uh, and at the end, I'm going to talk about ways you can help uh, the Cilium project uh, take this further. Because ultimately, this is just a pitch to get you involved in the Cilium project. Uh, that's my job. That's what I'm here for, is to encourage people to get involved in the project because you can fit a lot of features in the Cilium project. Uh, in fact, um, the external workloads feature is, like I said, a really interesting feature to me. It's a way to uh, extend all of Cilium's capabilities. If you're a Cilium user, you understand that it's a way to uh, get access to policy enforcement and observability across your cluster, but now you can do it to workloads outside of the cluster. And you know, not everything is Kubernetes yet. There are still workloads out there that are VMs and will continue to be. So uh, the other thing uh, you should be excited about is the fact that Cilium incorporates WireGuard encryption uh, to provide transparent uh, encryption between workloads in your cluster right now. And, and that comes with a, a ton of benefits. It's no sidecars needed, uh, no adjustments to the workload uh, manifest. It's part of the feature set that you get uh, once you turn the feature on in Cilium itself. Um, but wouldn't it be great if these things worked together? <laughs> uh, these are actually separate features being developed inside the Cilium project. And the dream is to make sure that you can have a secure Cilium network that reaches beyond your cluster but you can get the benefits of Cilium's uh, feature sets, like I said, observability and policy enforcement, uh, even outside your clusters, like across clusters and to external workloads. The reality is, is like, we're really close to this actually being uh, achievable. Um, and I'll get into that in the not quite live demo. Um, so before Cilium 1.14, these, didn't inter these features didn't work together at all. There's actually uh, a new feature that showed up, a new beta feature that showed up in 1.14 that allowed uh, Cilium to encrypt traffic, not just between pods, not just between the, the endpoints uh, and the containers, but between the node hosts themselves and the pods. So that made what I'm going to show you possible. Um, and I need to point out that these are two different beta features. <laughs> So the fact that two different beta features are actually working to produce this capability is amazing to me. Uh, like this was an unforeseen capability. I happened to, this actually documented as not working, but I tried it in the pre-release testing for 1.14. I was like, this works. Like this is, this is great. So, but think about the, why I think it's interesting is like, I think the external workload is a hidden gem of a feature. It's been in, in beta for a while in Cilium. Uh, but we're not, I haven't seen a lot of people talking about it, and I think it's, I think it's a hidden feature. And I think the uh, WireGuard encryption, where you can start encryption the traffic out to these VMs, um, is, adds a lot of value. It unlocks a lot of value. And I think it's going to, once, once this is fully working, I think people uh, will be much more interested in using this uh, feature pattern, these features together. Um, and I just sort of talk about, think about an example use case to why it's important if you're still using EC2 uh, spot instances or something. Uh, these things come and go, not as fast as containers, but they come and go. They don't have stable IPs necessarily unless you make a really big effort. You don't need to make that effort anymore uh, once you start using this external workload uh, feature. You can start making use of Cilium's um, label-based identity uh, to do policy so you can, you can correctly um, secure the communications between these external things and your cluster. Uh, a sh small word about the new beta feature, the node-to-node -node encryption. This was developed for completely separate reasons, not to support this. It just happens to make the turn on this capability that was sort of latent in the external workloads. Um, and again, it's a beta feature. 
So uh, real quick summary um, of WireGuard. This is one of the technologies that we're talk I'm talking about here, right, that Cilium makes use of. It's a separate project. Um, and in fact, you're probably, a lot of you are probably already using WireGuard products already. I know I am outside of Cilium. In fact, uh, uh, Tailscale um, has a great summary that I've referenced the bullet points that they provide at their page. Uh, about why you should be interested in WireGuard as sort of your new VPN. It's, uh, it's baked into the kernel, it's connectionless, it uses UDP, it's, it's um, a private key pair solution so you can build uh, a VPN solution really simply. Uh, and if you're not using it, you should look into this. It's a great technology. Cilium uses it now. Um, and so the basic operation of WireGuard, um, this is a simple point-to-point. Uh, -point. The idea is that you have a dedicated tunnel device on, in each of your hosts, and you're able to actually um, just use the UDP uh, connectionless tunnel. You have to do some small firewall um, rules to make sure that you can the UDP tunnels can see each other, and you can make sure the established links uh, can send back. That's about it, um, and it's uh, really great uh, technology. I can't say enough. I love uh, using it. So. Um, how Cilium uses it is a little more complicated. <laughs> uh, because there are pre-shared keys, right? There's a private and public key. You have to be a little smart about that. And so what Cilium does is actually each of the Cilium agents that run on each of the pot, each of the nodes in your cluster will generate that private and public key pair automatically. And but then will actually advertise the public key as an annotation in its node information. So in the resource that it exposes in the cluster. And so then all the other um, agents know how to access those annotations, and they're able to set up the peer connection. So all the, all the nodes in the cluster are peers in this uh, Selenium provided WireGuard tunnel. Um, the, whoops, sorry, the control plane is actually a little special, uh, and this has to do with the node-to-node -node, uh, communication feature. You, you really shouldn't uh, encrypt the communication to the API service, because if you roll those keys, you lose access to the API, <laughs> and then you no longer have a peer network. So that was the last feature that got implemented in 1.14 was to make sure that you can control which nodes were participating uh, in the encrypted tunnel. And that's why I have two different uh, cloudy things here, right? So the top one is the, is the more traditional uh, Cilium uh, VXLAN network. And once you have this all configured, a little bit of traffic still flows through this uh, to communicate with the API server. But most everything else now will flow through the WireGuard tunnel that Cilium provides for you inside the cluster. And now we can actually extend that outside the cluster to this external workload. And, and it, it basically has sort of the same things. It has a little bit more information because the external workloads aren't cluster members, but they still have to interact with the cluster. And Cilium has a feature for that called Cluster Mesh, which allows two clusters to basically share information about uh, node identities and endpoint identities. And the external workload sort of piggybacks on that infrastructure. And it's not, it's not a cluster, but sort of is a cluster. Um, it is, so, but I'll talk about that a little bit at the end. So um, important Cilium concepts. I sort of thrown some words out there already. So the big one for me is identity. I think that's critical to everything Cilium does. But Cilium has these abstractions that basically uh, amazingly enough, match up really well with some of the Kubernetes things, right? So Selim has a concept for a node that maps to a Kubernetes node. You know, it has an endpoint that really maps to a Kubernetes pod, but these are abstractions, right? Identity is pretty unique. Uh, this actually, what ultimately it comes down to, you have a set of metadata or labels, and that gets turned into a unique um, numeric identity. And that's what allows Selim to do very efficient things in terms of network filtering or observability filtering. Uh, if, you're, if you've used the product, then you, you know more about what I'm talking about. But this is key to, to everything that's going on. Uh, and then, you know, we have uh, extractions or on top of the Kubernetes network policy, Cilium network policy, whoops, um, basically allows us to expose those labels as selectors so that we can then uh, make use of that identity information. So we're not relying just on IP anymore or IP address. We're, we're using this metadata uh, to make policy decisions. Um, and so like I said, identity, the identity is key, right? And inside Kubernetes, we talk about labels, but you know, we talk about tags in other places, right? 
It's all durable metadata context that human understandable. We, and once we have access to that, we can make policy decisions based on that metadata. Um, right, and I keep saying, this is a beta feature. <laughs> um, so um, all of this comes back to identity, right? We have policies that apply to, to endpoints. Uh, nodes have endpoints in the Kubernetes. These no, those endpoints are pods. What is that in external workload? Well, it's just one big endpoint, right? It's just the, the host network. It's not, there's no container network namespaces uh, in the external workloads. And then um, services are a construct inside of Kubernetes specifically. The external workloads don't have a service construct yet. Um, the, all of this is primarily happening in the Selena agent, which are run one per node. Um, and it's, it's handling at the low level, the uses EBPF uh, in the data path to deal with the, now, the routes and the traffic control and, um, and the decision of whether or not to use the encryption um, tunnel or not, right? Um, there is the, a CNI, you need to have CNI somewhere to basically make decisions about what IP address is going to be assigned to different containers. And I can, I, I can really skip this, like Cilium uses EVPF, like the, I'm not going to talk about it, there's going to be 17,000 talks this week about this, um, I'm really talking about a little higher level uh, uh, feature conversion here. So. The way the external workload works, and this is the sort of magic part, is it's running a Selenium agent, but it's also running this extra cluster mesh API server, and the cluster is running its own cluster mesh API server, and these two things got, are able to communicate and share information about identities. So, so um, I, we are not directly interacting with the Kubernetes uh, API server from the external workload. We're sort of we're sort of talking and agreeing on shared identity state, right? Like, so this cluster, this cluster has a whole bunch of identities associated with all the worker pods and things running in it. And this external workload has just a few identities that it defines, which are basically its self and its own endpoint. So not a live demo. Um, I set up I set up a little uh, cluster in my home lab, and I'm going to show screenshots from that, essentially. And, and uh, I was hoping to do a live demo, but I do not trust me or the network to do this in a timely manner. So I'm going to show screenshots instead. But it's a step-by-step. -step. You should be able to follow along with this and do it your, uh, build the same thing. So my baseline here is I'm actually uh, using a K3S cluster. I have a couple of, or three nodes, a couple of workers, and, a, and a, the control plane node. Um, uh, you do have to make sure that the external workload is able to talk to the nodes of this cluster. So if I actually have them on the same IP address, uh, private network, the VM and the, um, and the Kubernetes cluster. Um, that's, I'm just showing for reference, this is how I've installed the uh, K3S server. I've turned off a few things here. I've turned off Flannel and QProxy and Traffic. Uh, and uh, its own version of network policy controller because I'm going to use Cilium for all of these things. Um, and I had to basically modify the SAN so it, it knows what host name I'm using for my local um, server. And the worker node is easier because it picks all the information from the master or the control plane. So the Cilium install, uh, this is actually the Helm the Helm values I'm using with the Cilium install tool, and I've color coded this a little bit. The the um, the purple uh, down at the bottom basically is what I need to tell Cilium that I've turned off Kube proxy, so it needs to know where to find the um, Kubernetes API. Right, that's just a Kubernetes API server, and I've I'm telling Cilium to do all the job that Kube Qproc proxy did. Um, the orange is uh, aligning with the K3S defaults. Um, in terms of how it's going to choose to do um, pod I IPs. And then the green is the features I care about, right? I'm basically telling it to turn on encryption and turn on WireGuard. So I'm going to have a Cilium cluster that's using WireGuard encryption between pod workloads, but not between pods and the nodes yet. So, um, and actually behind the scenes, Cilium install is actually filling out a whole bunch of other things in the Helm chart that it detects automatically based on what it's found. So I've, I've configured like 
one third and then the Selenium install produces all the other uh, settings for me automatically. And then you can actually, I, I point this out because you can actually pull out the full uh, Helm values uh, for reference as a dry run, which is really nice. It's pretty transparent. You can now run this in the Helm if you need to. Um, so from, from this point in, I'm going to use the Star Wars demo uh, that the Cilium provides. Uh, it provides a uh, Death Star API where we can make landing requests. So in the normal demo, you would do like a pod, like a TIE fighter or an X-Wing with the appropriate labels. I'm going to be uh, doing it from uh, alternative locations, including the external workload as well as directly from a node in the system. So um, I have one note. Um, I need to make sure that the, that the uh, backends for the API that I'm running or the server I'm running aren't on the control plane because I know the control plane is not going to ever see encryption um, because the node-to-node -node feature doesn't let that node get encrypted so we don't run into problems. So here is the first test where I'm testing traffic between cluster endpoints. And I'm actually doing a, a TCP dump on Cilium's WireGuard interface on the, on the right side of the screen. And so what I'm doing on the left side, I'm actually calling into the X-Wing pod and telling it to do a landing request. And it is, I believe it's, it's allowed, right? Oh, that's a, oh no, it's just not found. But I, but I, I saw the request go through WireGuard. So it's, it's great. The WireGuard uh, tunnel sees the information. But now if I, I, I should look on my screen. If I do a test from the, from the node itself, not from a pod, but from the node running the pod, it actually doesn't run through the wire guard tunnel. It actually runs through the, through the traditional Cilium uh, VXLAN tunnel because I haven't turned on node-to-node -node encryption yet. It's, uh, without turning on the node-to-node -node encryption feature, the Cilium wire guard just does pod-to-pod. -pod. It doesn't go from the nodes to pod. So I just need to, I'm just going to turn that on and see what happens. So, so this is literally a one-line change in the Helm chart that I had. I just have to tell it to turn on node encryption. And I run, I run a Cilium upgrade uh, with the new values. If I run that test again, uh, what happens is now from the node, I'm actually seeing uh, communication through the Cilium uh, wire guard tunnel instead of the VXLAN. So now I have from node to pod working inside the cluster. So that's the baseline. That's where we get into beta, the beta feature of this. So the, the cluster is set up, Cilium is set up, uh, WireGuard set up, and node-to-node -node, uh, encryption is enabled now. So now I need to actually enable the cluster mesh so I can start up that cluster mesh API server, which is uh, pretty uh, simple. Uh, and you see that I've got it running, and then now the cluster mesh API um, service is running as a node port service. I then have to um, create the external workload abstraction in Selenium. I have to tell Selenium to expect uh, an external workload. And the big thing is the workload you make has to match the host name because when the host register, it's going to register as the host name and, and fill out the information on the first contact that Selenium agent makes. So um, here is this going on. So I basically uh, tell it to create, I tell it to create an external uh, workload. I tell Cilium to create an external workload. I give it uh, a tiny little subnet uh, for its endpoint, right? It's like a 30-bit a, a submask. What is that? Four IP addresses or something. Uh, and then I've also added some additional labels. I'm going to use those later uh, because I want the labels for metadata. I want those for context so I can do stuff uh, like network policy against those labels. Um, I then have to... And I'm, I'm showing here that even though the external workload abstraction exists, it doesn't have an IP address yet. It doesn't have a Cilium node yet. It doesn't have an endpoint yet. All that stuff gets created on the first contact that the agent makes once you register the uh, external workload. So now I actually have to create, um, turn this external workload into a thing, and I have to provision um, the Cilium agent. So uh, the Cilium uh, a CLI tool actually has a way to produce or generate a provisioning script. Uh, it, it does a few things I'll talk about in a couple of minutes, but 
but basically you, you, you create this install script and then you copy this install script onto the system and you run it and then it registers. So I copy that over. I then kind of make sure I see one more. Yeah, I run, I run the install script and because these are beta features, I have to do some manual extra things to this install. Elsewise, encryption won't be enabled and uh, I'm just, I'm simplifying my life here by making sure IPv6 isn't enabled. It's not, it's actually not that important. And then I tell, I tell it to, to turn on node encryption. So once I get that and it's running and it comes up, then I actually now see that the Cilium um, external workload has registered an IP address. It's now listed as a Cilium node. It's now listed as a Cilium endpoint. And so... Uh, I now have all the pieces of the abstraction in the cluster. I have a Cilium node, I have a Cilium endpoint, so this sh should now participate in the Cilium network. Um, so now, this is where the beta thing comes in. So I actually uh, try to do the same curl command um, to the Death Star service that's defined in the cluster, and it works, and then I look at the TCP dump, um, on the, on the wire guard, I see the request on the, on the encrypted channel, but on the VXLAN, I see the response. That's odd. Uh, that was unexpected. I should say in 1.13, before 1.14, I couldn't even get this far. I can't even register the agent. So this is, this is progress. Um, and then I go the other way, um, or I should say I, I do it from... Uh, using the back end instead of the service, just to make sure it wasn't like an issue with the service. Same thing. If I go the other way and I go from a, I go from a pod to a, to a little mock HTTP server running on the external workload, uh, it's backwards. The, res the response is actually over the encrypted channel, but the request is over the non-encrypted. I did say this was a beta squared capability. Uh, I'm actually I'm actually amazed it works this well. Like this is a tiny issue I think um, with uh, the implementation. That's and I talked to one of the maintainers this week about it when I when I was setting up this demo because when I did this originally I didn't go this far. I actually just said oh I saw encryption but I looked deeper and I saw and I found this and then, and we think we have we think we know why we just have to actually I have to file the issue and can work on it. But hey Thursday. At the Cilium Contrib Fest, this is something that that can be worked on Thursday and during that hour and a half. I actually, I'm actually pretty pretty confident it's not like a data path thing. It's something high level and sort of the abstraction because the data path works. It actually routed traffic. It just chose the chose the wrong path. So, but there's some other things uh, to do. Uh, I want to say. Um, that, but the network policy works. If I apply labels and do a network policy, I can actually make access to the API server disappear uh, from the external workload. And if I actually reference the labels that I actually put into the system, I can get access back. So uh, this works anticipated in that respect. So I have high hopes. So uh, real, real quick, because I'm running out of time, um, where do external workloads fit in, right? There, there are Linux hosts that we want to treat as a Cilium input. But they're all, but they're not managed by Kubernetes, and they have to um, they have to share their identities uh, via the cluster mesh API server. That's sort of the big takeaway. Um, so the install script um, actually has a lot of room uh, for improvement, but it's it's basically doing like four things, right? It's like it's messing with DNS, so you can see the services in the cluster. Uh, it's installing the certificate necessary to communicate with the the cluster mesh API server because that's a secure connection. Uh, and it installs the agent as a privileged Docker container, uh, which then does the eBPF program installation and management, as does every Cilium agent, just no longer on the cluster. Um, could all of this be replaced with other provisioning logic? Yeah. In fact, there's, I think this would be great to see some Ansible modules for this, actually. Um, so why was con uh, manual configuration needing, needed? Um, because it's beta and it's not some of this logic detection isn't baked in yet in the script. Um, so where do we go from here? Um, this is a beta feature. How do we get it out of beta? We need users to provide uh, something approximating real uh, use case, our real world feedback that they're trying to use this in something close to production. 
that's how we get features out of beta. So I would be I would love to talk to people about that if they if they have a development environment or testing that's close to production and want to try this out. Uh, I would love to see this push past beta, and we can actually start documenting it as a feature. Um, there's also a lot of room for improvement to enhance how this works uh, beyond the basics. Uh, like I said, the provisioning uh, script uh, would be great. I'd love to be able to uh, support Podman directly instead of how to install Docker on the Linux stuff. Like, uh, if you get Podman for free in some of the distributions, you should make use of it. Um, and then, like I said, the provisioning modules like Ansible would be super great to see. So I think that's it. I'm just out of time. Oh, questions. I have time for questions. Man, I'm wearing them out, huh? Questions. Who, who read Thank you. Um, it's just a question about the, um, the agents. So from the diagram that you showed at the beginning, you showed that there was like a NAT router in front of the... Um... We'll go back. Uh, if there's something questionable, it's just my, it's just me. The project does not. Um, so I am, I am not aware inside the Selenium project of, a, of an appliance. But it may exist. OK, any other questions? OK, give it up for Jeff. <laughs>